Hi everybody, it's Misty, aka Frank and Belly. Um, I wanted to make a video today um, specifically on post-bariatric uh, hypoglycemia. Uh, most of you that follow me know that in 2013 I um, was almost seven years out from gastric bypass and developed severe um, dumping syndrome off anything I ate. This was healthy foods. Um, and when I would, would dump off my meals, I would have a really bad case of reactive hypoglycemia. This is also known as postperidontal hypoglycemia, or they still call it hyperceliac hypoglycemia. These are all basically um, postbariatric hypoglycemias. Um, I obviously had my initial surgery in 2006, and was never made aware um, that this could happen to me years down the road or, you know, some people it happens um, right after the surgery. So it was quite a shock in 2013. Um, it really did change my life and it really did almost kill me. I went through a gastric bypass reverse to try to um, cure the hypoglycemia. Um, and it did cure it for a year. Um, 2014, um, my hypoglycemia symptoms returned, dumping did not. So while my dumping was cured, my postperidontal um, hypoglycemia returned. I had some studies done, um, and I was down in the 50s range, which put me in the category for still having postbariatric hypoglycemia. I am pretty lucky that we are stationed in California. I have um, been able to be seen at Stanford. Um, Stanford has a huge recognition for post-bariatric patients um, that have um, somehow developed hypoglycemia, whether it be, you know, a few months out from gastric bypass or whether it be years out like I was. Um, the good thing is I saw my endocrinologist last week. Um, she was the head of a huge study, and um, she said that it is, they are having a lot of boards about this. Um, bariatric doctors are finally um, coming out and saying that this is, you know, a huge recognized condition um, that can be caused from gastric bypass, which makes me really happy because I have been trying to spread awareness for this since 2013 because so many doctors wanted to say that it could not be linked. So basically what they have discovered that around 150,000 to 200,000 people are still having uh, weight loss surgeries every year, particularly gastric bypass. I don't know what the results would be for um, the sleeve and other procedures. But so out of those people, roughly five out of 10,000 people will um, get hypoglycemia and it will be either immediately, you know, as a couple months out immediately or it can be years out like how I was. Um, so you're looking at roughly 100 people a year. That's kind of a large number to me. Maybe 100 doesn't seem like a, a big risk to people, but I think if you're dealing with symptoms after every single meal, um, it makes a huge significant difference in your life. Um, let me tell you about some of the symptoms if you are not aware. Um, some of the symptoms and this for post-bariatric people, if you have the type that I have, um, it occurs after meals. So say you ate a meal, um, usually immediately after I eat, probably within 30 minutes, my sugars will go down. It just depends on what my body, how, or how my body adjusts to the meal I ate, how I'll do. Okay, now granted, I live on a high protein, low carb, sugar-free diet. This is a diet they will have you maintain if you have hypoglycemia. This is supposed to be able to treat it. In some, in mild cases, it does treat it. For me, um, 
it does not treat it. So I still off of, you know, just having a vegetable and steak can get very low um, into the, my, my low after those are into the 60s, which is a lot of symptoms for me. Um, so the symptoms can be sweating, shaking. Um, I always feel like I'm going to have an anxiety attack. I feel this flight or um, flight response like, you know, just like a horrible anxiety attack is going to come on. I usually know to look at my meter because luckily I have a Dexcom meter that 24 hours a day is reading my blood and it, it tells me so I can kind of see my, my spikes and my waves. Then about at the three hour mark, I go low again and then I start rising again. So um, I do know if I'm fasting, like most bariatric patients, it'll take, once I, I level out, I will stay level for hours um, before I start to get low. It's when I ingest food. So, um, you know, it can be as serious as um, seizures, passing out, unconsciousness, altered um, mental loss. I've had that pretty bad when I get in the 50 range. It takes me a very long time to um, sink my brain with what I'm trying to do. I remember one day I was at 55 and I was standing looking in the fridge. My anxiety was so high and my brain, I was thinking, what am I supposed to put in my mouth? All I could think of is I know I have to get something in quickly. Um, because I was at the risk of passing out, but it took me what felt like an hour, but eventually I reached for some Kool-Aid because I didn't have juice. I drank some and then I backed it up with a, um, a protein and a carb later on afterwards to stabilize it out. I usually, if I start to get low, I use peanut butter, peanut butter crackers, um, because you don't want to treat are kind of hypoglycemia with sugar unless you are, you know, at that level because treating it with sugar will set you up for a backup crash. Um, anyway, I kind of wanted to address it because somebody had left a comment on one of my videos saying that, you know, her doctor was up front with her right away and told her the only, only way that people like us get this is if we eat sugar and carbs. That's the only way. So I was really happy to see that bariatric doctors are telling patients now that this is a possibility of something that can happen, but that is not true at all. There are a, a huge handful of patients like me that do not ingest sugar, that eat very low carb, um, and we still are dealing with hypoglycemia after most of our meals. Um, the reason being for this if you look on the internet, there are some studies. The reason why I know about this is I go to Stanford. Stanford has been working with patients like us for 10 years, uh, particularly my doctor, which I'm very happy to have. Um, so this is what they have found out for people that think it's only caused by what you eat. And I'm not saying that it's not. If you're gonna ingest sugar, then yeah, you're gonna have issues. Anyway, so I did, I wrote some of it down. I'm going to try to post the links below. Um, Stanford did the study first. They figured out that there is a hormone. So basically, when post-bariatric patients eat, your pancreas starts releasing insulin like crazy. So the pancreas just starts overproducing insulin. Uh, why that happens, they're not quite sure. It's something to do with, um, from what she's telling me, the way that we're rerouted. Um, that causes uh, our body, our pancreas, to signal that we're not getting enough. So then insulin just starts producing out, which in return is going to cause you to go low after your meals. So this hormone is called a GLP-1. It is a gastro tract hormone. And um, like I said, it's released after meals. Um, the great thing about it is a study that they've done. They have found a drug that reverses this, okay? So the drug is called Excedin. And when the patients go in and they have this test done, they find out that their hormones are crazy when they're going low. They give them this drug through infusion. Um, 
and it literally blocks the receptor. So it blocks the GLP-1 and the hypoglycemia does not occur. So I know from talking to my doctor last week that I'm going to go in and I am in a different bracket since I've had a reverse. So the study actually would not pick me up because they think if you had a reverse, you should not have it no more. But Stanford has agreed to do a day study with me um, and they're just working out the funding now where I will go in and see if I am still, there's something still off um, and if I still have the same type of this drug will work for me. But I know that it is finally getting approved. This drug is getting approved in Europe, um, which is great. And this drug has moved on to the second stage. Okay, so if you look up on the internet, it's called Eager, E-I-G-E-R. They have been, they have now took over the study from Stanford, which means it's in its second phase. Hopefully we'll get, um, you know, FDA approved. Um, they're seeing huge, great results. All the patients that got below 50 were all given this drug. This drug all blocked the hypoglycemia. So um, now that that study has went over to them, you know, they're a huge medication corporation. Um, there has to be money to make these medications. So hopefully that will um, be enough once Europe gets it pushed. Um, for the United States to look at it and, um, you know, recognize this. I know my doctor, a bunch of Harvard doctors are pushing really hard. They're, there's, they are recognizing this now as being a um, condition, you know, and these are endocrinologists, okay? Endocrinologists are doctors that really believe in bariatric surgery. You know why? Because it's the number one uh, treatment for diabetes, but they're realizing that there's this other spectrum of people that maybe didn't have diabetes before, maybe some of you did, that are um, coming out with the issues like we have. So it is great to see all the advancement. Um, I hope it doesn't take another 10 years. I definitely would like to have the option if mine is a still missing, you know, that hormone is still playing a role, which they think that's what it is, um, to later on be able to have a medication to block this because, you know, I have tried all the medications um, that they prescribed and to block things in meals and they don't work. Um, it could be I have another condition called gastroparesis, which kind of um, plays a different type of, low, uh, of role with blood sugars. So, that was what I kind of wanted to get out to you guys um, about the advancement with hypoglycemia, just to let people know that this is a is a huge issue in the bariatric um, world. It is something that patients should be told that, that is a risk. I know patients always think like this will never happen to me, type of thing, but it can. Um, I'm kind of at the stage where I'm going to go see motility next month at Stanford and um, you know there's another treatment that they have used for hypoglycemia these patients that haven't been reversed they go in and they get a J tube put in the remnant stomach the remnant stomach um, takes in the food and obviously it's linked with the pouch because once they start taking their food intake through a uh, J tube they don't have signs of hypoglycemia anymore and there are lots of patients living like that. So um, I have been pretty much told that that's going to probably be my next step. As long as motility approves it, I will be going on a feeding tube um, trial basis to see uh, it, with it hooked to the lower part of my stomach, even though I'm reconnected. Obviously, I still have a pouch and a stomach um, to see if it treats it or not for me. And then I would have the option of staying on a feeding tube, which is really hard for me to even, I don't know, absorb. Because, you know, when you're young and you think about uh, living the rest of your life on a feeding tube, it's kind of hard to digest. But when I think about the symptoms I live with daily, um, I've had a few setbacks in the last few months because my 
numbers have been going so low that I had to close my daycare again. Um, my husband was uh, deployed for a year and came back at his seven-month mark um, to help me because I can't drive long distances anymore. Um, so the hypoglycemia has definitely taken over my life a little bit more, um, like back in 2013. So you really need to run your numbers after your meals if you feel like you're having symptoms. Um, you know, make sure that your numbers aren't getting too low if you're suspecting this. And go see your endocrinologist. There's, there are a battery of tests that they can do. The best test is this one where you ingest like Boost or some type of drink that's high in sugar. I did Boost. I did two bottles of Boost and it does make you very sick if you have hypoglycemia, but it will show your numbers. So I think I spiked up to like 256 in the first hour, um, but by the third hour I was down to 56 very um, rigorous, but it's like a five, six hour test. And that test will prove if you have hypoglycemia after ingesting, um, you know, a high sugar food. In this case, they give liquid because it goes in quicker. So yeah, I'm going to try to post the links below um, about the studies and what they're saying now about um, post-bariatric hypoglycemia. I hope this brings a little bit more awareness and understanding that, you know, this is a condition that, yes, for mild people can be um, controlled with food. Mine, for the most part, after having the reverse, has been pretty controlled with food. Um, but that this clears up that if you go and make the decision to have gastric bypass, that this is something that could happen and this is something that can there can be people that medication does not treat it and food does not treat it and it still happens. So that's kind of where I'm at and um, I talked about the studies. Oh, one other study, if you're on the East Coast, Harvard has been working very hard on the same um, post-bariatric hypoglycemia like Stanford and I was told that they are running a study um, where they do like a glucon um, pump that um, the patients get and it's a trial and people can sign up for it. So if you're over there, you might want to look into it. And it gives you, from what I heard, like round the clock, um, like a, you know, like an insulin pump, but sugar. So that way you can keep your levels. Um, and that was kind of brought up to me as an option too, but obviously right now we're on the West Coast. Um, so yeah, just look into everything, um, take a, a diary of foods that, you know, you, you, some foods may be worse than others and you can eliminate them. And I wish everybody the best of luck. October is going to be my three year mark for my gastric bypass reverse. And I will probably be doing an update video, um, for my, hypoglycemia and gastroparesis and letting everybody know what motility has suggested as my next step. And um, I will talk to you guys all soon. And huge hugs if you're struggling. And I'm always thinking about all of us. Bye.